Hi guys, welcome to Rad World. My name is Zeno and I'm here to introduce and host a new segment for the channel called Retro Corner, where I will be talking about one retro video game in each video that I have a little bit of history playing and enjoying and that I would love to share with others who may not have played it yet, who may be a little unsure about whether it is something they want to try and also for those that maybe have had their own experiences with it. For those of you that have had experiences with the games or simply want to chat about it, before before you get started, I have a little housekeeping to go over. This isn't meant to be a concise in-depth review of the game, although I will be mentioning some facts to do with the game, such as date of release and a few names of people involved in developing it. If I make a mistake with some of that, feel free to correct me and let me know down in the comments. Okay, so enough of that, let's get into today's Retro Corner video. Final Fantasy VII was developed by Squaresoft and released for the Sony PlayStation in 1997. Although it was the seventh installment in the series, it was the first one to be released in PAL territories and was also the first game I had played in the series. The game's history follows Cloud Strife, a mercenary who joins an eco-terrorist organization to stop a world-controlling megacorporation from using the planet's life essence as an energy source. After a set of events occur, Cloud and his allies are soon in pursuit of Sephiroth, a former member of the corporation who seeks to destroy the planet. During the journey, Cloud uh, builds close friendships with his party members, including Ares or Aerith, Gainsborough, who holds the secret to saving their world from a coming disaster. This is, of course, a heavily simplified version of the base story with a lot of details left out concerning a lot of different facets of the game. But I wanted to leave out as many spoilers as possible for anyone who has yet to play the original game or for those that may decide they want to try it after watching this video. For myself, this game stands as a starting point of my dive into the JRPG genre. Before playing this game, my experiences with RPGs consisted of a couple games of Might and Magic on the Mega Drive and Shining in the Darkness, and I had never really heard or used the term RPG before this. I was introduced to this game by a friend who bought it around one day to show me what it looked like, and from that point, I knew that I had to buy my own copy of it. The adverts for the game that had been shown all over TV at the time had made me stand up and pay attention but seeing it in my own console with my own eyes was what pushed me to the next level and from then on any little bit of money I could save and scrape together went to purchasing a copy of Final Fantasy 7. It was also at this point that names like Hironobu Sakaguchi, Tetsuya Nomura, Yoshinori Katase and Nobuo Uematsu would start to be what I would look for when it came to game developers and the kind of games I wanted to play. I eventually branched out from a small group of names, but this was when I really started to take my interest with video games seriously. I fell in love with this game and for a long time it was all I wanted to play and talk about. Gameplay Segment the game features three modes of play, the world map, the field, and the battle screen. At its grandest scale, players explore the entire world of Final Fantasy VII on a 3D world map. The world map is packed with areas for the player to enter, including towns, environments, and ruins. Barriers like mountains, deserts, and areas of water can be found as the game progresses, and the player receives vehicles that can help traverse these obstacles. Chocobos can also be found in certain spots on the map, and of court can be ridden to areas inaccessible by foot or vehicle. In field mode, the player navigates fully scaled versions of the areas represented on the world map. For the first time in the series, this mode is represented in three dimensional space. The player can explore the environment, talk with characters, advance the story, and initiate event games in this mode. Event games are short mini games that use special control functions and are often tied into the story. While on the world map and in dungeons, the player can randomly encounter an enemy and this is where the game transitions to the battle screen. I'm not going to go over the mechanics of how a turn-based RPG works or how the active time battle system works and revolutionize the idea of taking turns striking an enemy in an RPG but instead offer my thoughts on my favorite battle mechanics and what made the battle so memorable. A combination of seeing the 3D model characters, the flashy animations that played out when you choose an attack or use a magic spell and the cinematic feel for 
from the camera flying around the battle were the surface level of what made battle so impressive but for me it was the feeling of getting stronger with each battle a thrill of knowing that with each tiny bit of experience you get closer to unlocking some new special attack and being able to customize and keep track of how you're advancing the stats of your characters in your party i know this must all sound like overblown rantings from someone looking at this game through heavily rose tinted glasses but you have to look at all of this in context for myself and for many people this was our first time seeing something like this this was our first time playing a game that had all of this and for any kids that had read choose your own adventure books this would be my own version of playing dungeons and dragons this was a dream come true the materia system in the game is how all major skills and abilities are managed except for the limit break abilities of each character materia are small orbs that contain abilities and once they are slotted into weapons or accessories those abilities become available for use by the character that has them equipped materia range from offensive magic to defensive magic they unlock special abilities such as mime which allows a character to mimic a skill or spell you can use very rare special materia to summon massive monsters to aid you in battle there are hp plus and mp plus which can alter stats when equipped and also other materia that can be paired with an offensive or defensive spell in order to create a new variation although the materia system isn't quite as complicated as some of the skill and ability management systems in other final fantasy games it's easy enough for a beginner to figure out and have fun with but still provides a good level of customization that veterans of the series have become to expect when i think back on what made this particular final fantasy game so special when i first played it a clear image of how unique and memorable the characters are is always at the forefront of those memories the backstory of each of the characters is memorable from the single father trying to be responsible but still doing irresponsible stuff with barrett to the mouthy old pirate with a short fuse with sid each backstory has an intertwining narrative that you can't help but get sucked into and want to find out more about even the supporting characters and villains are memorable and have their own little quirks whether it's heidegger's horse laugh or the other members of avalanche jesse biggs and wedge who may see cloud as very standoffish to begin with but by a certain point start to warm up to him and see him as one of them my point is these are all well fleshed out characters and their stories stick with you well after the closing credits and no it's not just because this particular game is constantly being milked for everything it has by square enix although i wouldn't disagree with you if you pointed that out music segment Throughout Final Fantasy VII, its set pieces are amplified in an emotional and theatrical sense thanks to its amazing score by Nobuo Uematsu. By this point in the series, he was already a highly praised and accomplished composer, but upon hearing some of these tracks for the first time, my sense of what a video game could do and be on an emotional level was blown away critical segment I've left massive holes in my, for lack of a better word, assessment of this game, but that is because I would recommend that if it was your first time playing this game, go in as blind as possible and just enjoy it for what it is. For most people, this game is either the first game you played in the series and probably your favorite or it overshadowed one of the others and is seen as severely overhyped. Whatever side of the fence it falls on for you, I can't really blame you if you see it as overhyped because it sometimes does feel like it, especially when Square Enix keeps treating it like the gift that keeps on giving and the gifts it's giving, nobody even asks for. Now don't get me wrong, I really enjoy the Final Fantasy VII Remake and Crisis Core and games like Dirge of Cerberus, although it wasn't one of my all time favorites, are still really good to see because of how much it further fleshes out the universe, but when is enough going to be enough you know? With how much of a graphical powerhouse that Square Enix has become, looking back on the graphics of the original Final Fantasy VII may be a little jarring for people who aren't nostalgic when it comes to 1997-esque artistic merits. What I'm trying to say is some people may think that horse characters and having no mouth in a cutscene is kinda ugly and old, while it's 
pre-rendered backgrounds and mostly static camera or play scene weren't an issue 20 years ago, the idea of someone sitting through wall after wall of text in a JRPG because there was no voice acting might be a bit of a tall order nowadays. Still, considering the time of release and the context for which it was received by gamers at the time, this was kind of how a lot of us discovered a joy for reading. It also caused a lot of arguments when it came to pronunciation, but that's one rabbit hole why I refuse to go down right now. I'm not going to use this final part of the video to try and convince you that Final Fantasy 7 was a flawless masterpiece, or act like a gatekeeper and say that if you haven't played it, you don't know jack about the series. I think if you're interested, try it and see if it's your thing. It shouldn't take much to see if it is. If it is, that's cool. If it isn't, that's cool too. This is my first ever YouTube game based video. I am planning to do the same thing with Final Fantasy 8 and 9. And if you have any criticisms, ideas, or simply want to chat, leave a comment down below and make sure to look out for new videos that will pop up on the channel throughout the coming weeks and months. If you enjoyed the video, a like would be much appreciated, but a dislike is also cool too. Please don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time. I'm Zeno and I'm out of here.